Still trying to find first gear in my giant robot car on this week's episode of Cartoon Buffoons. I'm your host, Wyatt, and who is here with me today as always? Hello, I'm Morgan. I've been a Digimon working for Myotis Mine this entire time. <laughs> and who is our very special guest for today's episode? Hi, I'm Velvet, and I've also been here the whole time, watching, waiting, oh. judging. Ooh, and <laughs> we are here to talk about none other than Mega's XLR. Maybe not a big show to most, but it's a big show in here. Oh, it's a uh, huge show. Me. It's a huge yes. show. Uh, well, and... Some might say a giant robot size. Mm, mm. Maybe an extra large show, even. Uh, <laughs> so, so Velvet, we have you as the guest. Thank you very much for coming on. Thank you. Uh, thank you for having me. I'm really, really excited. Um, I want to ask, because you were the one who requested this episode, uh, and we usually talk about, like, oh, what is our history? How do we feel about the show? I want to start with you being the guest and everything. What is your history with Cartoon Network in general and then this show more specifically? Yeah, well, Cartoon Network was actually something I got to comparatively late because my family did not mm -hmm. have cable for a long ass time yep. um mm -hmm. so i feel like i missed the boat on a lot of things and kind of backfilled afterward uh okay. but when i was able to watch it it was kind of a rare rare treat um mm -hmm. and when i finally did get cable uh, megas xlr was one of the first shows uh i saw after we got it um oh cool and i was so also like coming into it five like sorry go ahead like 2004 or five yeah. was the era. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and I was also coming into it pretty primed because I was filling that void with lots of anime from the local video store mm -hmm. that I was way, mm -hmm. way too young for at an early age. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, it put me in the right mindset for this show. Um, but despite really loving it, I hadn't rewatched it until we did it for this podcast. And I'm so glad Ooh. I did. Because yes. this was a great show to see as a kid and then come back to as an adult and yeah. realize all the shit that's going on. Yeah. <laughs> to be like, oh, this show is like a real ass show. Like, that's the, like, they're not fucking around with anime references. This isn't some, like, like they got the Sailor Moon in there, but this isn't just Sailor Moon and Pokemon. You know, they're going for the throat. These people know yeah, the about real Captain Harlock <laughs> and Space Battleship Yamato. Yeah. <laughs> things like that. Uh, Morgan, how about, you, how about you tell us a little bit about uh, your history with the show? Oh, let's see. Um, well, we all know my sister with Cartoon Network. I've talked about it a billion mm. times on this thing. Uh, Megas XLR is a strange one because... Mm -hmm. um, I remember it, right? And I remember yeah. specific episodes, but I don't think the memory is nearly as strong as, like, anything else we've covered. Yeah. I mean, it's stronger than Doug Dodgers, of course, but, like, whatever. Yeah, or, um, or like, Time Squad or whatever. Oh, like. fuck, yeah. But, like, yeah, I just didn't, like, remember a lot. I remember the details. I, like, I watched some of it when I was, like, a teenager with some friends. Mm -hmm. But, like, going back to this, uh, man, uh, this is, like, a weird blueprint to what I liked when I was 17. So I'm just yeah. like, what the fuck happened? Did this show, like, indoctrinate me on accident? Uh, did I just <laughs> accidentally mm -hmm. get into Gundam and, like, Transformers and, and everything? And Mazinger? Yeah. Did this show just, like, implant the memories of me as a child and go, yes, you will go out yeah, into the world. Agent. <laughs> 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 like, yeah, that that is really interesting. For me, the show, like, I remember seeing the first ad for the show, which was just sort of like, no dialogue, no, like, ad copy. It was just Coop causing destruction and, like, cuts of, like, Megas the robot, like, destroying stuff and then him piloting it with, like, a video game controller or whatever. And I was like, whoa, this is so cool. Then, like, the first episode airs and it does this, like, awesome bait and switch for, like, the first six minutes of the episode <laughs> is completely serious, just science fiction, you know, uh, like robot alien warfare that kind of thing uh like 100 percent taking itself seriously no jokes nothing and then it cuts to the uh the beginning of the show proper 
uh, with the introduction of Coop and Jamie and everything, and then seeing the Megas. And then that's, like, I was, like, hooked from day one. I was, like, very excited to watch the show beforehand because the trailers were intriguing. I like giant, I you know, I dig giant robots. Uh, I've been a lifelong Transformers fan. I've talked about that. I've obviously also been Power Rangers fan, um, you know, since... Whenever I can remember, I watched a bunch of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers on VHS as a kid, as well as, like, Zeo and uh, Power Rangers in Space and whatever. Uh, you know, I remember Time Force airing and being like, whoa, this is, like, this is, like, as good as Star Trek. <laughs> or whatever, <laughs> like, you know, like, a, my kid had, because my mom would watch, like, um, TNG and like Deep Space Nine and Voyager and stuff that was airing in like the late nineties, and I would watch it with her and be like, "Oh yeah, Quark is funny," uh, or whatever. <laughs> Quark is funny. <laughs> which, which I still say when I'm watching the show. I mean, it's, it's true. Uh, he is funny. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just do not but call yeah, him I, a merry man. Yeah. I think like what's so interesting about this show in hindsight is that like. Like, like we just say with like your mom and that stuff like this is that like I lived mm. in a household with my uncle and my mm. mother who like were into like Doctor Who and all that other stuff, right? Yeah. But it was also very serious people. They did not like parody. I remember actually this mm-hmm. is a very strong Megas memory, and I think I said this about a shark cartoon before. But Megas was up there with One Piece with shows my mom found annoying. And I could not watch with her in the room. And I yeah. think that's so fucking funny. But I think yeah. my mom is just like mm-hmm. anti parody when it comes to like the stuff that she enjoys. Cause she loves science fiction stuff. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? I think like I guess I don't know where to start with talking about the show as a group. Yeah, yeah. But I do think that the number one thing I want to start off with is how intentional um the like cast of the show is. Oh I, yeah. I, I was like watching this show and I was like, huh. Kiva's voice actress is familiar, but not cartoon familiar. Like, mm-hmm. no, just anime familiar. And I'm like, that can't be on that. They're like, oh, no, we have to have the juxtaposition of Kiva versus Coop and Jamie. Mm-hmm. So they're like this. We got to get Wendy Lee, who has been yeah. in, I think, what at this point? She was already in Dirty Pair. She's Faye Valentine. Yep. Um, Cowboy, two Cowboy Bebop people, including yeah, the guy like, they did that on. They did that on purpose. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah, like um, also in like Roroni Kenshin and with late and like I think I'm checking this right now. Yeah, she's in War in the Pocket. Like mm-hmm. this, this is the most like hey they like talking. To, they, like, I know they talk to like their producers like this. Hey, we have to get her to voice a character on the show. She usually works anime. That's the point. Like yeah. this show, like <laughs> we are crossing ge- like genres over here. We have to have at least one, and there's more later on full-on mm. fucking anime voice actress and i think that's great because no way is me as a kid at this point am i recognizing voice actress voice actors yeah. right now right and yet but, and yet the voice for coop dave de louise is like a sitcom guy yeah he's the <laughs> like, dad from fucking um wizards of waverly place like yeah <laughs> oh really i didn't know like, that part yeah, completely yeah, he is. unrelated to anime or cartoons like he's a sitcom Dude, like, through and through, like, looking through it, like, oh, Lois and Clark, uh, you know, Saved by the Bell, College Years. Yeah, but I think that's, like, like that. I think that's why Coop is so good next to fucking Steve Bloom and mm. Wendy Lee. You're just like, there's just two anime legends and a guy. And that's kind of the yeah. show. That's yeah. the show's yeah. whole deal. <laughs> it's like, there's two anime legends and a guy. Although, uh, was there any... Speaking of anime legends, what a weird role for Steve Bloom. <laughs> It's yes. weird hearing him be, like, all snivelly and, like, squealing when he's in danger. Mm. It's odd. I, yeah, yeah. Like, it, I'm so it, used to him being cool. I'm like, wow, he's just not cool, ever. Yeah, like, <laughs> this and Starscream uh, from Transformers Prime are, like, very interesting, like, deviations from his normal kind of, like, cool character. Because he's, like, a complete... Uh, Little cuck in <laughs> Transformers Prime and in this, yeah, uh, he's like the devil here. Um, like I, yeah. like I still want to talk about the voice cast. It will get to Jamie later, but Jamie is the devil. Um, yeah. Oh no, that's my fucking <laughs> one thing that I love about it when watching it as a kid, and then still to this day, 
is how big of fucking losers Coop and Jamie Whoa. are. Like, well, they let's... really do suck. They are, like, a kid version of, like, Beavis and Butthead almost, where there's, like, no hope for them to ever become, <laughs> like, functioning adults. <laughs> so it's, and it's just, like, very funny, uh, especially because the show is so, like, it doesn't really care about continuity, so they'll completely decimate the city in one episode and then next episode it's like yeah it's fine it's fine whatever who cares yeah (laughs) that is a fantastic bit go ahead Mm. although it's funny you mentioned beavis and butthead because i think the creators worked on the beavis and butthead Mm. movie before this like that was one of their big Uh, starting things yeah so you know tip mouse that's the animation studio it's it's around and strong today uh, and a lot of the, like, George Christick and Jody Schaefer and what the fuck is the name of the other guy? Well, they, they originally, you know, they're working at MTV. They worked on Beavis and Butthead, the movie. I believe maybe the show, but I know for a fact they worked on the movie. And then they did, uh, was it uh, Downtowners or whatever? The, Downtown? The one, yeah, where, where it's, like, very... Like, that's, I, I don't know if we could ever talk about that because it's on MTV or whatever, but, Wait, like, that, that's Wait. a show that I have a lot of nostalgia for, for similar reasons. As someone who was uh, vaguely goth at 16 and mm. loved Edgar Allan Poe, motherfucker, I know downtown. We will find a way to talk yeah. about downtown. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that was, uh, you know, and that was, like, oh, goat, he's in there because he's, like, based on a real guy. Um, uh, Chris Pranowski, that's the name of the yeah. the other guy who is like, he's like the, still the president, I believe, or still the like, whoever is in charge at Titmouse. Uh, and yeah, so th- like, that's why there's like a lot of like slams against MTV. MTV, there's a fuckload. Like, <laughs> in the show is because they like got really screwed over, uh, like while making Downtown, you know, it got canceled pretty early and it wasn't aired, you know, the, the old like... There was that time period right at the end of the 90s, beginning of the 2000s, where there was a bunch of, like, really cool cartoons made for adults that all got, you know, screwed over by, like, company mergers. Huh, I wonder if that's happening today. Oh, no. Uh, And then then they all just got bought up by Adult Swim and then aired on that, except for Downtown, unfortunately. But Adult Swim, you know, they got, like... The oblongs and uh, the, Mission Hill and other things like that. The only the thing that like blues. gives me gives me like hope about the future of animation is mm. that that did happen to Family Guy. That's the only thing that yeah. gives me hope about the future of animation <laughs> is that like if Family Guy could like have been hit with a whole thing like that and then come out of the dirt, say they were Futurama, mm. there's hope. Yeah. You know, I'm gonna yeah. be hopeful. Yeah. I'm gonna be a little bit hope core here. That like maybe mm-hmm. yeah. someday someone will go, man, you guys are fucking evil. You guys get these these shows dirty. Let's hire these people. Yeah, yeah. It, and also, if you want to talk about um, like voice actors and ones that I'm like, this is perfect. These are like the exact characters these people would be voicing: Clancy Brown and Kevin Michael Richardson as, as the, as aliens, the dwarfed. Yeah. Yep, like. Clancy Brown as, like, the leader, perfect, exactly who he should be voicing, uh, and it's, like, sunken into my brain, and then Kevin, Kevin Michael Richardson needs to voice, like, every alien guy, uh, just, just <laughs> like, in general. And then, of course, pertaining to me, you got Michael Dorn as the Regis Mark V, oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> which is... One of the funniest episodes in the entire oh, fucking series. Oh, I was watching an episode and Kathy came to the living room and just kept laughing at like, I am Regis. I, and then yeah. the dramatic music in the back, I'm like, yeah. oh, they're cooking, they're cooking so hard. What were you going to say and earlier, like, Velvet? It gets hit by a car and then the music stops and then it continues when it gets up. But continue, yes. Uh, I was just going to say, it's pretty wild that they kind of came out swinging with the guest stars in, like, the first three mm. episodes. Yeah! Like they, That's true, yeah. They got Bruce Campbell in episode two, who comes back, mm-hmm. and then <laughs> Michael Dorn in episode three. And yeah. they just keep getting more people as it goes on. Yeah, mm-hmm. this is one of those cases of uh, we might not get a second season writing that I love. Uh-huh. Like, <laughs> what kind of things can we ask for? 
just yeah. in case we do not get renewed. And I, I'm fucking I, so shocked that they got a second season. Me too. Like, I didn't remember a second season. I thought it was just like one long season or one. I was like, oh shit, yeah. these guys are cooking. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I just love whenever a show has like the we might not get renewed. Like I think like Smiling Friends is the best example of that of them going. Mm. Can we get um number fifteen? Can we have him on an episode? <laughs> Because we might not get a second chance. I'm just like, yeah, more shows should go like this. Look, look, corporations are evil. Go into his swinging. Do whatever dumbass idea you have. Mm. Um, like, I don't know. This show, like, the comedy is so good. And the voice is like, I know we're still on this a little bit. But um, even though he's a sitcom guy, Coop has, like, one of my favorite cartoon voices. I kind of wish he voice acted more. Um, yeah. He sounds like, like a real dude. He like, sounds like he a real sound... fucking dude. Yeah. Like now, to be fair, he sounds like he's like thirty five, not twenty five. But you know, he does sound like a real dude. <laughs> There's also um, who else was like in this show that was like a super dude? Oh yeah, Renji's voice actor from Bleach is in this show. Wait, really? Is, mm. Yes, he's one of the crab people from the from the episode with Michael Dorn. Like that, like made mm. the robot. And I'm like, is that? And I looked like, oh my god, that is Renji's voice actor. Like, th- yeah. this show has so much anal- anime, like anime dub royalty in it. And I'm like, what? that's so good. Was Bleach coming out by then? Um, I don't. I think it's close, but I don't think it was quite out yet because I think Bleach started. I think of, I think of like 2005 when Bleach started to air. Maybe 2006 because I remember yeah, Bleach and yeah. Naruto were around the same time on Cartoon Network. Naruto uh, was a little bit earlier, but yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. Bleach got. Like adults would regulate it pretty quick, mm-hmm. and the, like, and it got uh they're like, all right, Naruto, we have to replace the opening theme with a shitty song, but Bleach, Bleach could just have the best music theme. on earth. Every <laughs> <Yeah. time. laughs> so, such a good opening theme, uh, and it tricks you into thinking <laughs> that Bleach will be cool. All right, uh, and to be fair, it, it remained cool in theory. <laughs> For a long time, <laughs> yeah, That's it it, 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 it remained it remained people, dude at the mall with a, like a, a shirt with a shirt with a guy with a sword on it. Cool, the entire yeah. time. So Which, that's to something. be fair, I am just the lesbian version of that. So like, it <laughs> appeals to me. Yeah. <laughs> people uh, continue to insist that the news Bleach series is secretly good, oh, even man. though. I had to hear for like three years how bad that arc of hey. the manga was. So. As, I don't as, understand how the anime is magically better, but whatever. I'm going to go back to the point, but I do have to say, as someone who is currently destroying her marriage by watching that mm. in the home, and my and my partner hates it, it is pretty fucking cool. It's not good, Wyatt. <laughs> it's pre- like again, again, Bleach. If it's anything, it's fucking cool. Um, yeah. back to voice. Go ahead. It, it it is just wild that they finally gave Bleach a budget like 20 years later. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Kubo definitely like has blackmail material on somebody. But yeah, um, when it comes to voice, the other thing that I want to talk about is uh, I love having an episode with sentient robot people and going, mm, yeah. what should these two robot rivals be voiced by? Ah, Frank mm. Walker and um, Peter Cullen? Peter, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's, yeah. Just have, let's just have them straight up voice themselves here. Also, yeah. let me say, the most emotional Peter Cullen has sounded in a long time. I forgot mm-hmm. he can, like, really go at voice acting. I'm e- like, Except yeah. aren't they in opposite roles? Um, a little bit, yeah, because I think the, the the Megatron character wins mm-hmm. um, at the end. And, well, before Coop. There's like, also... Um like unicron <laughs> shows up in yeah. like that like later into the series like voiced by uh what's his name why is, why is his name leaving me the, the johnny bravo uh that yeah. guy uh, <laughs> like he's voiced uh by jeff him. bennett yes yes thank yes. you that's why much. i have in my notes um yes. yeah yeah and i just thought it was fun that uh peter colin is uh uh playing like if i have this right he's playing the megatron type and the megatron type is playing the stark screen type mm-hmm. yeah yeah no yeah like he's like the one like trying to become leader and then like <laughs> frank walker's playing the one, like i'm behind his back i'll stop him I'm like <laughs> well you guys working together to, it's great no, also they're both hmm the phone vibrated sorry it's about that yeah um they're <laughs> also both just ripoffs of famous mechs um, because mm. the one voiced by Frank Walker is just rating, but in like mm. devil man colors, which is mm-hmm. interesting. And then 
Optimus Prime, that's just Mazinger. When I tell you I was like at point like, like, like this, are they going to get sued? I know we know <laughs> yeah. why this show doesn't air anymore, but is it because a lawyer saw this stuff and went, fuck you? Just like, fuck <laughs> you, dude. I'm not I'm not going through the, the, the stress of all of yeah. this. I mean, like, the Mazinger Z one really got me because it was like, oh, no, I was being an otaku head as a kid during this time, mm. but, like, I don't know, like, American teenagers were not into Mazinger Z. They were yeah. not. Even if you were deep yes. into anime, that was not a thing you were into, but they got it. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Th the first episode has a spaceship, like, battleship Yamato reference in the chest. I'm just like, oh, these motherfuckers want you to know, like, these are, like, these are a capital N, capital D nerds. These motherfuckers yeah. are not playing. And I'm like, it's so fucking funny. Mm. Because it's, yeah. it's probably so easy to get that past, like, all the people who check for stuff legally. Because they don't know what the fuck to look for. They don't yeah. know what to look for. Like, <laughs> like, Here, I just want to have a quick little aside to make fun of modern cartoon fans real quick, as we, we often do. Uh, and yes. just talk about how much they are fucking pussies for getting so <laughs> mad at, like, Craig of the Creek. Or OKKO OK for having like some references here and there. Yeah. And then whereas this show was a thing and it's like not only is it every episode <laughs> is just like stacked with references or like pop culture shout outs or things like that. But it's like deep cut ones. Like it's not just surface level. You know, like yeah, maybe Bruce Campbell and Michael Dorn are a little bit surface level. I think they're, like, a little bit deeper in, like, 2004. Yeah. But, like, yeah, you could say that those are surface level. But, like you said, Mazinger, Captain Harlock, uh, you know, uh, even, uh, you know, even, like, Transformers, like, Generation 1 and stuff like that being in there. And all that stuff is just, like, yeah, these guys are fucking nerds. Like, they are <laughs> – they're the real nerds, you know? Like, I'm not, I'm not saying, like – oh, the people that are making modern cartoons aren't nerds. I'm just saying, like, people like this, people have been doing it way more egregiously in the past. Yeah. So you can forgive us when people making modern shows put in, like, one Dragon Ball reference or something like that, and then you're like, oh, this is the only thing that this show has going for it is its references. It's like, All no, right. it's the only thing that you saw uh, scrolling through Twitter <laughs> or whatever, and now you've decided that the entire show is that. Yeah, so. I mean, I I kind of get it from some perspective because, like, mm -hmm. a lot of media has been so goddamn irony poisoned and, like, yeah. all the franchising making self-references to shit all the yeah. time has kind of soured people a lot. And there's been mm -hmm. a lot of critique about the notion of nostalgia and the role of that in media and how toxic that can be. But also, mm -hmm. I feel like that's just sort of a thing that kind of depends. Like, I don't yeah, mind all like, the references I, here because, one, they're having fun. They're making references to things they like. They're not cynically yeah. dangling, here's a thing you li like in front of you. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's for them. It's here's for them. this random yeah, bullshit no. that we love and watched at, like, 3 a.m. while we were baked out of our gourd. You know? Yeah, I was nine, <laughs> nine years old when the show aired. I didn't know any of these fucking references until I was a teenager and rewatched the show. So, like, and then even this time, like, you know, I've rewatched the show many times throughout my life, but I still am catching, like, oh my God, that's a reference to this. You know, it just keeps happening. And again, like, yeah, that can be easy kind of uh, content in a lot of ways, but. I, also, I think that this show is able to do it more delicately because of the t context of the time that it was re released. I mean, very I nice. wouldn't yeah. describe any of these references as delicate. I just yeah, think it's, it's like, sure. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's no, this fun and sincere the and not subtle. <laughs> cynical and capitalistic. That's yeah, 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 it's sincere. That's a good way to put it. I, I like, I think like what makes this in like Craig of the Creek are the two ends of the spectrum of references for me. Craig of the mm. Creek will reference One Piece and D&D and and like, mm, like magic and magic like and like, um, fucking whatever lame fantasy book Kelsey's reading at the moment through yeah, a standpoint yeah. of these <laughs> are 13 year olds 
Of course hmm. the 13-year-old's reading One Piece. Are you high? Like, yeah. this is a 13-year-old. Of course he's learning magic from his 19-year-old brother. That's, like, the hmm. thing that happens, right? Well, this show is, like, on the other opposite end of the spectrum, where it feels like everything they're referencing almost metally feels like shit Coop would like that has now hmm. infected the world he lives in. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, feel, like I feel like there's, like, a medicine like this, hey, Coop. When that riff opened, you made all the things you like real. He's like, nah, I didn't do that. Like, it almost feels like that sometimes. Like, he goes to a planet and he fights Onslaught from the Transformers. And I'm like, all right, fuck off. <laughs> fuck. Like, you, you, like, Coop, you're doing this. He's like a space anomaly. Like, I think yeah. that's like the two ends of the spectrum where, like, it's like, oh, these references exist in the same way you enjoyed them when you were a kid. Or this is the it's guy like living in a parody of the things yes exactly those are the two ends i think they both work because they're both sincere in their own way mm -hmm. like, could it be that these creators are self-inserting into the show just just yeah. a little bit <laughs> <laughs> replicating their Possibly. own experiences <laughs> um i guess yeah. this this is a good way to talk about the actual characters because um i think wyatt you said coop was a loser right yeah. I don't think Coop's a loser. I think Jamie's a loser. This is my hot take. First of all, I think Coop is, and I, this is a lot to say, because I know his jokes, a lot of jokes are he likes to eat, right? Mm. Coop is the most legitimate, real, fat dude character in television history. Yeah. I because, oh, like, yeah. love how in the last episode, he's most offended by his alternate universe counterpart because he got skinny. <laughs> Yes, giddy about like, oh, what's wrong with you? Like, uh, I also love the like the silly moments like this. Oh, look, it's Jamie's chubby friend. Whoa, 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 ladies, this ain't this chub. Is fat. This is fat. And I'm like, let's get. Also, I love that like he's like. I found this out when I was looking up stuff for the show. There are people who want Coop so bad, and also he has strong mm. boyfriends of a bi girl, you know, Do energy. It. <laughs> so like, it makes sense. But like, <laughs> I mean, let me introduce you to. The bear community. <laughs> you know, like, I mean, Coop goes but, uh, to gay bars and cleans the fuck. But yeah, he's just like, I, I think Coop is like such himself. It's so comfortable mm -hmm. in himself and just like what he likes to do and everything. It's funny that him and Jamie are friends because that motherfucker's the opposite. That motherfucker yeah. sucks. He's the devil. He's like, but, yeah, but at yeah. the same time, it works because this is definitely just someone you've known for a long time from middle school or high school that you mm -hmm. just... You have to hang out with them because they're yes. yeah. around and like out of habit. Y'all get high and watch like anime you. together. It's fine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I do love the joke of like this. Cause like, oh, I'm so hungry. Where's Jamie? And he was like, you can just eat without Jamie. He goes, eat without Jamie. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, are you guys dating? Like this is. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. I like that. Like cut one. By the way, this show has a ton of cutaway gags, like very similar to like Family Guy. Maybe a bit, like, not as... They're usually, like, silent cutaway gags. Yeah, you know, no talking, like which a, is very funny. Yeah, but, like, I always appreciate that because it... You know, like, people make fun of that in, like, Family Guy, but it feels... I don't know. Like, in this, it... it with Family Guy and then things after Family Guy, whether it's true or not, people are always like, oh, they're just, like, ripping off Family Guy. But this was, like brothers with family guy you know this is around the same time that yeah that, uh like before that a re revival happened um I, I wanted to say like in that cutaway there's a guy with a autobot symbol on his shirt and i was like oh you know <laughs> <laughs> i point i soy pointed at the yeah TV pointing back the two guys like that's just us. <laughs> i i do think that's funny also that most most flashbacks are Jamie. I think like most mm -hmm. cutaways are Jamie, and it's him having a sicko fantasy. I, a fantasy speaking made of, made did for you, sicko. The one where he's like imagining being a hero on a parade, but for some reason mm -hmm. he's dressed as the fucking Joker and has a harem of green <laughs> Harley Quinns. And I'm like, that is the reddest flag I have ever seen in my Dude, life. I, 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 I'll, it's it's like up there like that one killed me also the one where like coop's like man they're like they both go man i wish i was a mutant and coop's like yeah and coop's imagine himself playing video games and have an extra set of arms eating and jamie's yeah. cutaway is and i'm and i was i had to pause the television and go what's going on is him <laughs> with a tentacle body holding a bunch of girls and they're like oh these tentacles are so long and i'm like Jamie, what the fuck are you doing? I hate what that I related this? to Jamie in that moment. I feel <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, like he's so horny, but like he's like sex pest mm. horny with the way he talks to people sometimes. Yeah. I'm like, but Jamie, back up. I love that because that that like 
the first episode of season two with the ultra cadets i feel like is the perfect like answer to that where like he gets conned maybe not conned but he gets like inadvertently tricked by these like sailor scout type characters and is like yeah i'm gonna get some space chicks and then immediately is like thrown into a life or death situation <laughs> and all this stuff also that episode has probably my favorite joke in the entire series that always makes me laugh and it's like right at the beginning when they all show up and they're all doing their transformation sequence and then the final one goes on for so long <laughs> that the other spinning. characters just like look over like what the fuck's happening <laughs> <laughs> and that just always makes me, always makes me laugh. Uh, I just so good. I do also think that like, I it Jamie walks such a thin line, like a fine line for me, where mm-hmm. he's super funny, right? Mm-hmm. He's also gross, but also yeah. he's like. He's so reliant on Cupid, like a like a fucking like they they call him a spider monkey at one point. It feels like it, like uh-huh. he's like a small yeah. bird standing on his large friend's back. Like, if, yeah. by the way, if Coop wasn't here to give me like um like he's stimulation, like crumb. Yeah, I yeah. would die. I would just die. <laughs> they're like they're the Togaros, like just fucking <laughs> on his back. Weird flesh crafting and all. Yeah, <laughs> but then we have Kiva, who I think. Kiva's like, like, listen, I know we've had the, about the trope of, like, the cool, m- more qualified woman who gives it the man. This is the funniest version of that trope. It is because yeah. truly the only two people who are worth anything is Coop and Jamie. I mean, Coop and Kiva, because Jamie's not yeah. doing anything helpful. And yeah. <laughs> I do love, as the show go on, Kiva gets more and more, uh, are we 2000s pilled is the only way I can uh, put yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> Which is great. Uh, yeah, I think Kiva maybe is the only character I would put in the, like, kind of outdated sort of... Because, just because, like, her type of character is that, like, Leela from Futurama sort of, like, oh, these idiots, idiot men can't do what this, like, very capable woman can do. Except for the fact that Coop is, like, miraculously a really good pilot, so he yeah. actually <laughs> is really competent, you know, he just is, like, kind of thoughtless or whatever. Like, he just throws caution to the wind. I do, um, like, I do think it's season I don't think two, that they, she's, like, a bad character at all. I'm just saying, like, that there's, like, that early 2000s sort of late 90s trope of, uh, like, that was, like, their version of the female empowerment was to, like, make the guys stupid and then the, like... The one Women woman are like, oh, we're the only rational ones around here, and then that kind of makes them more generic. I think it fit like there's a lot of context in the show as to why Kiva's there and who she is that makes that work. Uh, the fact that she's from the future and this is her robot <laughs> that is being co opted <laughs> by some other fucking guy uh, is like puts her in this very like bitter sort of uh, superior position. But, yeah, I do think by just... season two they do start like, I think, I think she starts respecting and almost befriending Coop more. Not so mm-hmm. much Jamie, but starts befriending him more. Like they start working yeah. together. Like, they, like the open up the episode where Jamie gets taken by the like Sailor Moon clones, and mm-hmm. like her, both her and Coop are working. Like Coop's mm-hmm. like a goof character, but he does work on Megas. He is yeah, he's like an about actual gearhead. Like yeah. he is. <laughs> like where's Jamie? Jamie's like just like oh, I'm, I'm just Jamie's like trying not to die. I think it's very much like mm-hmm. it becomes like there's not two straight men for Jamie, but there's like two competent people with their friend who's just like yeah. <laughs> a dickhead like <laughs> yeah so i guess how did yeah, you I, go ahead, yeah, go ahead. Uh, that kind of like dovetails into a lot of what was happening in season two where it's like okay they were actually starting to give the characters arcs yeah mm-hmm. and we're probably gonna we're probably gonna go somewhere with that before it got canceled um yeah because like yeah coops just actually like a good and competent guy when he lets himself be uh Mm -hmm. but when he's just like doesn't think about things and is stupid he blows up the city which they like (laughs) yeah they call out in a real way a couple times rather than a joke way which is like Mm -hmm. this show has sometimes breaks out into like just an episode that's played straight yeah. yeah. So I just like, can't help but wonder where the show would have gone if, like, 
they actually got to pull the trigger on character arcs and bigger yeah. plots and stuff. No, nope. because they yeah, were like, clearly going for that. Like, mm-hmm. I think there's two, like, moments that, like, stick out to me was when they do the episode where they got to save Kiva's ancestor, uh, ancestor. Mm-hmm. like, there's, like, a real moment at the end where Kiva's talking to her like this, yeah, I didn't really know or spend time with my family in the past so we could hang out, and she goes, well, no, I got something to take care of, but thank you for that. And, like, there's this mm-hmm. real moment of, like, her, like, then going to Coop and Jamie, like, oh, these guys are kind of my family now. It does feel like there was, like, this show is still a goof-based show, but because, yeah. like, much like animes that are goof-based, Usually there is serious plots that will happen in arcs and it does mm-hmm. feel like that. Like even the last episode being about like how even if Coop goes evil, Kiva's still with him as his friend has something interesting there. And it's just a bummer. We don't get any more. And it's doubly mm-hmm. interesting because they say pretty directly there isn't some like dark event that turns Coop evil. He ends up that mm-hmm. way if he keeps going as he is. Yeah, just like, fighting and fighting and fighting and not thinking about it. <laughs> and just, I, I have a cool robot. What's more? What's more to think about? I even yeah. feel like the like the 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 gap between like returning characters in season one versus season two. Like even like when they go up against the Gotcha Man slash Power Rangers slash uh-huh, Sentai yeah. guys. Um, like the first season, they, oh, Coop is dis- so good. Coop is destroying cities. Like he's evil. Let's stop him. But we go to the second season. This is like the first time Coop does anything outwardly straight up heroic, not on accident. He makes yeah. the clean decision to go. Hey, I have to go help these people because they are my friends. He says that to them mm. straight up, and I'm just like, that's so interesting. Like there is like a big difference between Coop just being a shithead. And he breaks less stuff in season two. Like he breaks yeah. less stuff in Megas. He's he's getting slowly more serious about this. And I'm like, God, they were cooking. So-. These are like really people that like like listen. They love the anime jokes, but they do get the progression of characters. Like there is yeah. like the Naruto's a joke character at first. Luffy's a joke character at first. But there is like serious things that it goes into, and they really know that. And I'm like, man, that's really important because, uh, you know that like you can look at the show and sort of if you don't watch it or don't look into it any further, it does look very like how to draw anime sort of very surface level kind of like copying anime. Obviously we've already talked about that. It does do some pretty deep cuts. So it's clear that these are people that like know their shit and know the tropes and everything. But like you look at and not to cause any flame wars or whatever, but you look at something like Ruby, you know, where it's like, they are just (laughs) surface level copying the aesthetics of anime and with none of the style or sauce. Yeah. No, there. I I totally get that. And I have a whole rant built up about that. Get ready. Um, Okay. (laughs) Because this show was coming out at the same time as teen Titans. Oh, right. Which we'll be doing soon. Yeah. Um, and I am a Teen Titans cartoon enjoyer, but mm. but the way it uses am- anime aesthetic sucks. It, it sucks real yeah. bad when they're, like, doing comedy bits and the heads are all big and it's animated on eights. And mm. it's like, it sucks because they don't know how to use it and it's not funny. And the fact mm. that they're using it at all is a gag. Megas yeah. doesn't do that. Like, they will just have the split screen reactions to things, and that's not a gag. That's, like, a serious emotion. It's like a stylistic Mm -hmm. choice, yeah. And sometimes when, like, Coop does an anime yell, it's a joke, but sometimes he's seriously, like, in desperation mode. Like, they clearly understand the visual language of anime better than the contemporaries on the network, basically. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. you're, You're so right, because, like... Also, when they do direct parody, it's not like they're parodying like this wide, like this broad stroke anime parody. It's very pinpoint. Like I think the Captain mm. Harlock episode is the greatest example of that, which is like there's not just anime jokes in that. There, there, there's specifically Captain Harlock jokes. Like yeah. the fact that like they continue to zoom in on this guy's eyes and <laughs> mouth and head. Like they keep doing like the three yeah. fourths view on him over and over again, and he has the rose for no reason. I'm like, yeah, this isn't supposed to be a reference to like oh catch all anime. No, these are people who like this show. Yeah. And I ha- like, look, it'd be funny if we changed our style 
for this guy in the show. And that's like yeah. a level of respect that like I just don't think across the board shows that parody anime like to do at this time period. Like mm. there's this twinge of it's weird. This show's like, no, it's not weird. This is just a style and it's funny to add in, in our cartoon that's silly. Like mm. Yeah, because I mean at this time anime is just kind of getting big in the US. Like mm. this is when manga is starting to fill up Barnes and Nobles and stuff like that. So it yeah. it's just you know, like execs trying to cash in on the trends most of the time. But this yeah. show was yeah. made by sickos, so they get it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and, I don't know, like, you say this with, you know, you mentioned, like, season two really starts to, like, up the ante and start to, like, turn it in from, like, a really funny, entertaining show with a bunch of tributes to things to, like, oh, it becomes, like, a real show. <laughs> and I do think the finale is, like, a really good, even though, like... Maybe not a great season finale because it doesn't, like, wrap up the actual plot of <laughs> the show. But, like, you know, it has, like, a lot of elements that I, even as a kid, I was like, oh, I really appreciate this. If this show goes out this way, I'm fine with that. Yeah, you know, like, yeah. Um, and so that's why I'm, like, uh, whenever they ask George Christick and Jody Schaefer, like, w this happens, like, every couple of years, like, are we going to get that Megas reboot? And they're like, well, we still don't have the rights from Cartoon Network, because <laughs> uh, they, and they, like... Oh, was that what happened? Uh, they fucked them over on that? Yeah, yeah. and they um, they did it as a tax write-off, so... Yeah, they can't, they, they legally can't, really, until they took the... Yeah, they have to buy back the rights at the same price that they got the tax write off from which would be like millions of dollars or whatever so they're like it's fine God, <laughs> this, did, i hate know. how this history is rhyming yeah yeah, uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> i feel like poetry should never stay out of history this. like this i do it like yeah. this this was like one of the first times i was aware of the tax write-off thing when i was when i was younger like when i was a teenager mm. find out about megas like this they could just do that they could just take someone's creative worker and, yeah they can because I don't, you know, oh, there goes. Yeah, they've I done hear, it a, a bunch now, so. Like I, hear the, those, oh. I hear the communist anthem somewhere. But yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> like, this is just like, like, this is so shitty that, like, they could just do that without even talking to the creator. They could just go, yeah, we'll never air this or release it. And now, mm -hmm. thank you for the write-off, right. everybody. And I don't get what? how that works legally, because in any other circumstance, that's called, it, that's called insurance fraud. <laughs> Or tax yeah. fraud. That's how <laughs> yeah. that's that's how that works. That's the plot of the producers. Mm -hmm. You, you yep. deliberately bomb and get rid of something to get the money. That's fraud. <laughs> I, yeah. also found, I also found that like apparently a lot of people behind the scenes didn't like the show. Um, yeah. yeah, which like is which... a bummer to hear. But I do get it from a standpoint. But I just I don't know. I think this show was like a hair early because um, I don't want to like give too much credit. But I think Mike Laszlo would have protected it. I can't prove yeah. anything. I can't prove anything. Mm. But Mike Laszlo like this. Oh uh, no, they they're, they're whipping. Hold on. Let me let me keep this safe on my yeah. other weird projects that I want to keep safe. I love Big O. Yeah, Let's protect say, it. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's the thing is that it's like it was just a little bit too expensive for Adult Swim. Mm -hmm. So it was sort of put into a network where it didn't really belong the way that it was. And this was at the point where Adult Swim, like, it pretty much was just still Harvey Birdman, Aqua Team, Team, stuff like that. You know, it wasn't until, like, 2005, which was the year that Pegasus XLR ended, that you got the Boondocks. Um, and that was, like, a more, like, a higher budget show. It still has some, like, cheap cheapness to it, you know? But, yeah, I would but say speaking of shows that uses... understood anime better than a lot of shows yeah. on the network at the time. <laughs> yeah, Boondocks. Yeah, exactly. Boondocks. <laughs> yeah that, that's what I was going to say, is that, like, Boondocks, it sort of has, like, you know, it, it uses this anime style, but it doesn't really, like, lean on the, like, tropes of... Or, like, the, those... It It's not as surface level as Teen Titans. Like, I think that that's a great comparison, because to me, like, Teen Titans was kind of, like, funny as a kid and then going back to it as an adult i understand these are all children's shows people don't attack me but <laughs> other shows <laughs> i've aged very well i'm still able to enjoy like ed and eddie and billy and mandy and stuff like that despite being an adult because of how well they've aged including megas xlr and teen titans 
is just very cringy like watching through it again because of those comedy things when it is able to take itself seriously or it finds alternate versions of comedy great you know and i and the thing is i'm biased i don't mind so much when like other things that have that Derek j wyatt art style do it like transformers animated great i love that show you know and uh you know uh, ben 10 omniverse and mystery incorporated and stuff like that big thumbs up um it but just, yeah like are, yeah go ahead are y'all gonna be it, covering the hi hi puffy on Yumi show oh oh yeah that's, yes, that's yes. like that's like a couple episodes right now. that's that's <laughs> the biggest culprit here in my I, mind when i think of cringe anime yeah. mimicry my, <laughs> i'm going to be so mean uh-huh. i'm going to be so fucking mean it will i will be mean as the season of the episode spoiler for when that comes out but i'm going to be mean mm. to that show but yeah like i don't know i feel like there's a bummer where like i this is my joker origin the fact that Derek J. Wyatt, like, one of the things he's worked on most popular is Teen Titans, is maybe going to be what makes me explode one day. Like, fully mm. explode. Because this motherfucker just got better. Things yeah. that he was attached to just got better as it kept going. And, like, I don't know. If someone, like, if my most popular work was something I made in my weeb phase, I think mm-hmm. I'd jump off a building. Like, it's yeah. just, like, the worst fucking case, dude. It's uh-huh. awful. But, yeah, like... Uh, all I was going to say about Hi Puffy Amiyumi is that at least one of the two is actually a Japanese woman voicing them. So I that don't is... know why they both aren't. Yeah, well, yes, but but the voice actress for Jenny, uh, Janice Kawaii, is also Ami. Yeah. Like, I remember I remember that as a kid being like, oh, it's so it's Jenny. It's voicing. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, one one day we as a country are going to reckon with why Gray Delisle and Tara Strong feel the need to be like Asian women Ra- so much, like Asian or, <laughs> or yeah, <laughs> this, this keeps happening. Speaking of which, there was like like Tara Strong is in Megas, but like not super often. Like it is just like in bit roles. I mean, yeah, she, she's there, in fucking everything by. though. Is the thing? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like I, I, it's like it's kind of refreshing that she like, doesn't have anything important, but because she's been like what she was a zombie island as with her mm. old last name and everything. It's kind of we, we, have we hit a role where she's the main character besides like Pop of Girls? I don't think we've hit a lot of them actually yet. No, because um, yeah, like Ben Ten is still like twelve episodes off from where we are right now. Oh God, um, I'm looking at the list right now. P- Puffy Amiumi is four shows from now. And uh, we're not we got, doing Challenge we, Showdown. Yeah, we are not. I, <laughs> I decided we're not doing Challenge Showdown. It's just, just like, one that's not much WB to say, really. Show. This, was, ra- this yeah. was racist as fuck. The episode yeah, over. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, look, look, look. Uh, are there some good episodes of Challenge Showdown? Sure. But also, yeah. Tara Strong is, is a little Ruya yellow hot? man. Is, yeah. All right, here we go. Milf Hunter over here. Let's, 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 let's <laughs> step is back. Is hot? Yes. But yeah, uh, but like, but, Tara Strong is a small, literally yellow man. Don't want to talk mm. about it, guys. It's racist. We're moving forward. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, well, here's the thing, because I still do have Chopsaki Chooks as a thing on We're the not list. doing it. We're not doing it. And, and, and I'm like, we just, we cannot do this. Guys, <laughs> like, there's I no don't know that, that one, can... but I'm just like. You lucky uh, soldier. Listen to the just title like, of listen it. Listen to the name of it. You're like, oh, God. I don't <laughs> It's like a it's like a slur from the ultimate dimension. When you hear it, you go, <laughs> yeah. fuck. But yeah, no, but like the Chops Lucky Shucks episode will be three minutes of me and why I go, hey, introduction, introduction, introduction. It's racist. And then we like, what, then... so where can we find you, Why? And that's like this yeah. fucking show. <laughs> Just... Yeah. Oh. But also um, the guy it got shooters too. The guy that made the racist cartoon is like out here with shooters, being angry yeah. at people for calling it racist. We don't want to say like, like... He's his own yeah, he's his own shooter. <laughs> <laughs> he's the one who's like just gets mad at people like cause Pan Pizza did a video about it. And it was like pretty like even handed, you know, tried to be like, Yeah, uh, it is racist, but I understand that it's trying to be an homage to like Black exploitation films in kung fu films of like the seventies, you know, that's what it's going for. And then the you know, because he interviewed one of the people there and got some like behind the scenes info of like why it was created and the inspirations behind it, he included that into the video and the guy got so fucking mad that he included the interview that he agreed to in this video that was like 
mildly critical of this show. Honestly, a little bit softball on the show, but I understand why you would do that if you're you have the guy in it. But he still was so sensitive that he just like I remember like in the cartoon creator like group chat or whatever like Pan would just like keep sharing like unhinged emails that this guy kept sending him of like you better take this fucking video down right now <laughs> like how dare you call me racist etc cetera, etc cetera. Right. you know just like long emails like yelling at him uh for that video and it's like so I doubt he would care about a random podcast on YouTube but, it, there's but a chance I don't want to talk about the show because it it's fucking horrible. And <laughs> <laughs> like, so I'd, I'd rather not do that. We have skipped shows because we're like, can we really talk about Baby Looney Tunes? No. no we can't. No. What I'm going to do, like fucking twiddle my thumb. Also, side th- speaking of racism of cartoons, what an awful segue, Morgan. Um, uh-huh. <laughs> I am surprised at no point that this show made in 2004 with all these anime references, have any character speak with a racist voice. They avoid yeah. that. I thought the Sailor Moon episode was a slam dunk to have someone doing a really shitty, I'm trying to sound like an anime character in a very offensive way voice. Mm-hmm. Never do they do that. I think it's yeah. like, I like, it's weird. I'm like, like not like bad weird, but just I'm like, I feel like that was like the joke of the time. I guess it goes back to like this show being more like having anime voice actors and stuff like that. But I'm like, mm. huh. Yeah, that is yeah. that is pretty wild because given the premise of just taking a bunch of Japanese shit and setting it in, in like white America, it's like that uh-huh. feels like it's playing with fire. But they kind of dodge around that. <laughs> S- mm. Speaking of white yeah. America, this show is like. All right, East Coast hat is on. Let's go. This show is so <laughs> yeah, fucking w- in Jersey. Let's go. Uh, I'm. Yeah, I was gonna ask you as somebody from Philly, you know, which isn't the same. I understand. No, but there's a good joke like this. We're gonna do with all these monsters, Coop. Where are we gonna send them? I don't know, Philly. No. Fuck you, Coop. <laughs> yeah. I should fight you. I should fight you in the street, motherfucker. Don't talk shit on the city. There's already enough monsters in Philadelphia, you bitch. Just <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's just, it's but such it's, a good joke. Like, I, the thing is, though, this show is, like, so deeply in Jersey. Like, in a way that's, like, really mm. funny. They are constantly talking about being in Jersey. They're constantly referencing stuff that's in Jersey. Like, the yeah. bo- like the, the gas stations, the bodegas, all of it. Like, this is very mm. much a, like, I, I want to put my mech show in the city I'm from. And it's so great. And I love that, like, they do this thing that's so funny where they go, this is Jersey City. They're so specific. Like, you're not going to see water. You're not going to see the shore. This is the city. Yeah. We are in the city. <laughs> yeah. Like, and I'm like, that's so real. This is Jersey City, and we are blowing it up over and over <laughs> and over again. Which is just, yeah. you know, that just happens in Jersey. It just happens. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's so much cooler than... If it was set in L.A., you know, yeah, is like a lot of things are set in L.A. or in California sort of coded places, even if they're not set in L.A., like the Simpsons, they secretly are set in L.A. because that's where all the fucking writers live. Whereas like these people are like, no, we are set. It's like Craig of the Creek where they're like, yeah, no, this is fucking Jersey. Like this is like this area. There's. Wawa, there's you know like all, this <laughs> stuff, all these like cultural markers of exactly where it is, and um yeah, if if I could be for just a split second horny, mm-hmm. when they did an episode at the DMV, and there uh-huh. was that alien woman with the sick helmet, voiced by Nani's voice actress from Lilo and mm-hmm. Stitch. Mm. Guys, no joke. I <laughs> awoke like a sleeper cell agent. I stood up and I went kill. Like I like this. I have to find Ronald Reagan, and I almost left my house <laughs> because of how turned on I got. She yeah. was so fucking cool. She mm. she was. I I want to. I took notes on every episode, just like a few lines each. Mm. But my entry for episode eleven, it says episode eleven, bounty hunter lady hot. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Open and close. <laughs> she's so hot and she's so cool. I'm like, God damn, I'm agreeing with Jamie. Shut up. I what hate did you. We, what did we watch recently that also had her in it? Was it uh Was it was it Clone Wars? No. Yeah, it was either Clone Wars or like fucking Party Wagon or something that she was she <laughs> was in. Party. But But yeah, yeah, like she, she's so good and that alien yeah. is so hot. 
mm-hmm. and fucked up. Like, oh, dude, we're doing a Predator reference. Should it be a hot alien woman instead of like a normal alien? Like, you keep talking. Whoever, whoever mm-hmm. pitched that, you. Go ahead. Yeah. Keep going. It was just so funny, like, to hear that and, like, see that character. And it is nice that they have an alien reference and she has, like, a fucking big evil rhino monster that she kept mm. enslaved, it turns out. Yeah. And she, like, Man, yeah. She, she likes to put collars. Kiva's in a weird goddamn BDSM trap by her. I'm like, what's going uh-huh. on? <laughs> like, it, the episode's the only, like, outwardly horny episode at times. But also, if you're doing a show that's parodying anime, you gotta get one in. You yeah. gotta get one in. So mm. I'm like, yeah, this fucking rules. Like, cause yeah, I and go ahead. Yeah, go. Ahead. Well, I was just gonna say, Megas is like another aspect of it is it's funny, but it's like also actually cool. Yeah. Too. And like the music is a huge contributing factor to that because it has like some very iconic, uh, like tracks that played during battle and everything that i like still remember to this day uh that i'm like oh yeah this is like when this song plays you know like shit is going down um and i don't know it's just like it actually is able to like thread that needle and be like really funny and stupid and sort of uh you know uh subversive and everything but then also be like but it actually is this robot is really cool looking and it's doing a lot of like cool shit and the things that they're fighting are actually like dangerous cool threat like like the Regis Mark V is actually like a crazy villain yeah. as far as like in a science fiction story that's like so cool the fact that it gets to the point where there's thousands of them at the end is like i love that shit uh like that's such a like oh crap we accidentally ended <laughs> the world and then they had to like cause a nuclear winter to uh you know, shut it down. <laughs> I do I do love, like, how many episodes have, like, real threats that Coop solves with, like, the funny thing like this. Ah, oh, we made a yeah. black hole with this black hole gun. I'll make another black hole that eats the first one in itself. <laughs> what are you talking about, you bitch? What you, that doesn't work, but it works. And he's like, great. We're going to say Velvet. Sorry, go ahead. I no, I, re- I was just going to agree with everyone. Like, it kind of hit me that, that the show was able to do that, and it wasn't just nostalgia playing tricks on my brain. Uh, mm-hmm. when they go to the ring world episode mm-hmm. and that's mm-hmm. just an episode of sci-fi television like yeah there's hardly any gags in that one they just play it mostly straight yeah and it kind of works and then the, the mm. finale two-parter is cool as fuck yeah, yeah. Like, Spe- yeah. speaking of i just want to get it in there coop's minions are combination zaku Cy- cylons which is like <laughs> inspired <laughs> Oh, if yeah. we're talking about mech design, um, Coop, Evil Coop's mech is a fucking custom of the Sazabi from Char's Counterattack. And yeah. here's the thing that's insane about it is, it's made before Unicorn comes out. Because mm-hmm. of how they customized the Sazabi in that show, it just looks like the, the Sinaju from Gundam Unicorn. So yeah. they've accidentally made a robot that will exist later. <laughs> Like because they seven slim, years later. Yeah, they slimmed down the design of, like, Char's mobile suit. I'm like, they just do that later on in Gundam Unicorn. So I'm like, this is fucking insane. You you mm. guys predicted the future with a gag. Mm. <laughs> yeah. And then, like, you know, I always get a kick out of all of the, like, dashboard gags every single episode. You know, just, like, there's a new convenient button for, like, that exact situation. I love that shit. I've been, wa- like... We're not going to talk about it on this show, or maybe we will, who knows. Uh, but I've been watching through Beast Wars again recently, and that is a show that is so, like, it is it is still, like, a 90s toy show, but they also, like, treat it like fucking Looney Tunes sometimes. Yeah. And I just love that stylistic contrast of, like, how seriously it takes itself sometimes and how stupid it is the other half of the time. I just love that. I feel like that's missing in a lot of uh, modern shows. They either like veer in one direction or the other. I like that like mix of that tones, balance. Yeah, yeah. Uh, where it's like when it needs to take itself seriously, you got you know you got Code Hero and everything. But like sometimes you get episodes like we just watched one in season three of Beast Wars where they have to go retrieve a computer from underneath the water. 
Rat Trap goes into like an underwater submarine and at first he's like claustrophobic and scared and then he starts riding around and there's like all the fish and sea life and he's like smiling and there's like this jaunty music playing and then it cuts to Silverbolt on the radio and he, he's hearing the music <laughs> that's like playing in the scene like out of the radio and then he just like has a very confused look on his face and that's like I just love that shit because yeah it's I love those like clashes of tone I love those like complete disregard for uh, like the rules and like consistency and you know keeping it you know tied down to like one style so like yeah you get the the episodes where Bruce Campbell shows up as uh, Modoc, you know, and that's funny. And like, but then it, like, even like he becomes like a dangerous threat. And then like the Regis Mark five, like, yes, it's funny that he's like a dinky little robot and keeps getting Dick destroyed, bigger. but then he becomes so big and dangerous that it's like, Oh fuck, how are they actually going to beat this thing? And then, you know, like, yeah, you get the finale where it's like, oh, my God, like, Coop has become, literally has become his own worst enemy. He has to team up uh, with the Glorfed in order to, to have Favorite. a chance. Yeah, it's just, like, it's so cool. It's able to, like, actually be really cool. Um, I guess. And I just love it, yeah. I want to ask, uh, because you brought it up for a second, does anyone have any specific button gags that they found funny? There's one in, there's like one in every episode. Was there anyone that stuck out to you? I'm curious, because the one that stuck out to me was the very last one, which is, mm. Coop, I hope you have a save the world button. He looks around, <laughs> destroy the world, no. Smite the world, no. Destroy the world, yeah. worse, no. And he goes, save the world, and the button's missing. He goes, ah, oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's probably my pick. I, I To be honest, I don't mm. remember all the button ones. Um, mm. Yeah, I do like when well, he engages like manual control and he has to play Space Channel Five. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> that, that that's really, really good. That one's really good. And, he gets winded like, right um, away. Like, uh, all right, guys, I can't yeah. do this. <laughs> Go away. But I, I like it when the button is exactly this thing that he said before. Yes. <laughs> He presses it like he's like, I gotta do this thing, and then it just <laughs> this <laughs> like, thing. Yeah, I do like uh, it when like Coop uh, activate the jets. He looks around, goes, no jets here. Sorry, keep yeah, looking, keep... brother. He goes jets. There we go. And he hits that one. I'm like, fuck, that's so funny. Like it, <laughs> the the fucking ret the retcon button, mm. the like the eject Skippy, like the what we ejects his little cousin out of the thing. It's so yeah. funny, like. It's it's one of those goofs that, uh, goofs that like I'm like yeah I do love an overarching goof in a cartoon I can't mm. help it guys I just because the thing is they never focus too long they're very quick and they're come they're in it you miss it if you're not looking and I'm like that's good yeah that's enough that fit, like I love that stuff because it feels like it's just like because I, I you know I'm a giant nerd I watch a lot of like storyboard pitches and things like that mm -hmm. you know so like people showing off to the the network like oh this is what the episode's gonna be or whatever and it feels like so many of those gags are just put in there to like get a quick laugh out of the yeah <laughs> like the people that they're presenting the storyboard to you know to be like oh haha ha, you know because the joke is that they didn't care enough to actually make this make sense in yeah, a narrative level the, the mech changes <laughs> the mech changes every episode i love the way it works yeah <laughs> like because if i was if i was an animator i'm like this oh yeah i'm animating a scene what scene are you animating oh uh, uh coop hitting the cruise control button that's next to the cruise out of control button <laughs> what a dumb joke what a stupid yeah. joke that's super yeah. funny like the, the, uh, uh, I, I told before like sniper comedy where like a joke is very pinpoint quick get out of there mm. this show has a lot of them like jokes that like we're in and we're out and I'm like great amazing yeah. also mm. side note about in and out I thought this show was going to slog with these long episodes and it doesn't mm. I was so worried that like is 22 minutes too long nope because it is yeah. formatted like a there's even like a weird in between like I'm watching on YouTube but like it feels like there would have been an eye catch sometimes mm -hmm. and how episodes yeah. like go from one part to second part and I'm like mm -hmm. fuck someone should have made Mega Sixlore eye catches I know. oh that would be I cool know. well yeah, I mean I each one has to be a different famous eye catch from a different anime oh yeah. yes <laughs> let's get, like let's you have get, to oh, have the Mega XLR 
Megas XLR, XLR. Full Metal <laughs> Alchemist one. Yeah. The, the Dragon yeah, Ball yeah. one where um, instead of like, <laughs> it's, yeah, uh, Jamie's cl- climbing at the Coop's lap like Gohan did the Goku. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anything else, guys? Stuff. Yeah, I think that that's, yeah, I mean, any... that's everything that I had. You, you, Velvet, you said you had some notes if you want to yeah, talk go about through some of them before we... Yeah, I mean, I mostly got out what I wanted, but let me just mm-hmm. cruise over my, my notes here for a little bit first. Um, yeah, no problem. Oh, also, in the same parade episode with Jamie's, like, uh, huge red flag fantasy, uh, uh-huh. they have all the parody characters as the balloons, and I just... For mm, some reason, mm. I lost it at Augie the Adorable Aardvark, and it's just, like, yeah. deranged <laughs> Sonic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then just, it, like, they knew the show was ending in the finale, so, like, there's even more references than usual. You'd think they'd yeah. be running out, but no, they were saving all the sci-fi ones to come in uh-huh. right at the end. They've got Stargate, yeah. they've got... Uh, Battlestar Galactica. I think mm-hmm. there's a Doctor Who one in there. Um, yeah. Lots of Gundam th- ones in the last two. Lot, like, lots yeah, of we- Gundam ones. There's a Planet of the Apes reference. He does the You mm-hmm. Maniacs, You Blew It Up thing. Yep. Um, <laughs> yeah. Man. Oh, and in what that is- episode, they make an All Your Base Belong to Us joke, which was... Yeah. Not an outdated joke at that point. <laughs> yeah, that's like, that's like that was like contemporary to two thousand four. I can't is... I can't imagine being like a chronically online at that point fifteen year old watching the show and going, "Ha ha, they're like me for real." Like <laughs> yeah. a beautiful world. Uh, that's like because like then later in Transformers Animated you have like the headmaster, uh, who also speaks in the like elite hacks or kind of. <laughs> Says like I'm totally owning you, nude. <laughs> or whatever. It's like maybe a little lame or outdated by like 2007, but like I think it's very funny. Oh, um, I guess the last thing I have that this is super important, but I had to bring it up. I do like that there is an episode where Coop fights, and it's not even lampshaded, really, just mm. a mecha Gamera, just straight yeah. up like does Gamera's moves looks just like mm-hmm. him, and I'm like, yeah. 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 Some lawyer we... was going to have a field day with this motherfucker. Yeah, especially mm. early on, the all the like kaiju and Godzilla references are way up front. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's so cool. Also, that was like this was right around the time that I started to become very interested in like retro games. Yeah. And uh, you know, seeing like Coop, like that one episode where he gets like the cartridge. From the yard sale, which is what I was doing at that time, was like going to yard sales and getting like Genesis games for like one dollar, uh, you know, which is like insane <laughs> to think about now that you could get old games for so cheap. Um, but like him going and like testing it in all these different consoles, it was just like, oh my god, this is so cool that it, like uh, this character is like me or whatever. And I feel like I've uh completed my evolution as an adult about to enter my 30s uh you know fat white guy with a beard like coop so <laughs> you know you, that's a <laughs> i grew up i grew up from watching you coop i grew up from watching I know, you. <laughs> yeah, I learned it from you uh but yes yeah, so that will do it for our discussion on regs xlr it was a lot of fun one of my favorite shows that we've talked about for sure yeah up there with like you know, with, like, Ed, Ed, and Eddie and Billy and Mandy and stuff like that, as far as, uh, like, just shows I absolutely love uh, from this era. Uh, and that revisiting it, I learned it's like, oh, it's not just nostalgia. These really do hold down the fort. Um, but, Velvet, thank you so much for coming thank on. Thank you so being, much. Thank you being so much for having me. I had a blast. Very uh, fun Do you want to plug yourself on the internet? So where can we find where you? Where to find you? Uh, yeah, I am uh, Velvet the Dragon on Twitter and Blue mm. Sky and mm. Tumblr, I believe. I, I, I still mm. post there sometimes, mostly just vampire art. I'm, I've been posting a lot yeah. of art nowadays. Uh, my Patreon is just Velvet Dragon, not Velvet the Dragon this time. Uh, mm. And I am currently on a 
uh, one ring role playing game actual play podcast called Athra Play. Oh, cool. uh, and that's just on Spotify and also Twitter and Blue Sky. I, awesome. Wyatt, I have to put you on to that because I know you like fantasy novels and I've been listening to it and I might get it to Lord yeah. of the Rings finally, Wyatt, because of oh, this shit. podcast. So <laughs> don't get your hopes up. Do not get do your like hopes those, up. <laughs> I do like those uh, those Mormon books. The, uh... <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> don't give Brandon but, uh, Sanderson any credit, you motherfucker. I, well, I like non-Mormon fantasy <laughs> yeah. as well. But... Good news. <laughs> Lord of the Rings is extremely Catholic. <laughs> yes, that's that is important. Yes, uh, but Morgan, how about you? Where hey, everybody! Are we be able to find you. Hey, guys! It's bit time. Ooh, Ooh. you can find me on Tumblr at Girl Next Vor. You could also find me on Blue Sky at Girl Next Vor. But fair warning: there's a giant robot showing up, Coop showing up, also, mm-hmm. and we're gonna fucking destroy Blue Sky. <laughs> Um, I'm also on Twitter for the time being, uh, I'm trying to wean myself off it, but until I do, you can find me there. It's hidden in a large archive, the name of my URL, but once you get it, you'll have Mm. it on Tumblr and blue sky. I'm mostly posting art. I am, we talked about earlier. I'm trying to draw girl versions of all the transformers from beast wars. So look out for, if that interests you, if you, if you ever thought, Man, I bet Waspinator is stacked. Then I got mm-hmm. some good news for you. Wyatt, where can we find what about you? Rampage. When are you gonna Rampage? Do Rampage? Rampage is no Rampage is Bush. Ramp, ramp, rampage and Depth Charge, Toxic Yuri. <laughs> oh wait, I might have to rethink it. Hold on, you might be on to something. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, we're going back to the lab, everybody. We'll, we'll we'll keep you posted. Wyatt, where can we and find you? Transmutates their adopted daughter. Uh, but anyway, you can find me on Twitter. At Wazbranger, W A Z P Ranger. I have not made Blue Sky yet. I'm still not, I have not made it yet, <laughs> but maybe I will have to because people are, people really are very it. serious about moving off of it because Elon Musk is the most embarrassing, horrible person to ever exist. And I do hope that he dies on a mission to Mars. Oh, um, fuck yeah. So I hope that that happens sometime soon, please. Uh, but find me there, mostly stream of consciousness and stuff. But I will post about videos that I make. I have two channels. One that you might be listening to right now. Oh, my God. It's only magic. Cartoon uh, reviews and everything. I haven't posted a video this a year, entire year, maybe. It's been a long time since I've uh, posted a video because I've just been so caught up in cartoon buffoons. I have made new videos on my second channel, Planet Zebes, Metroid stuff. I just, like, quarantined it off into a different channel. So you can check it out there. Uh, and... If you want to know when I'm making new videos or podcasts and you want to get them early, join the Patreon. Actually changed the Patreon levels just recently because uh, I was like, is $5, yeah, do I want people paying $5 for this? Like, I feel like we have, like, we're doing good value, but I feel like $3 is a more fair yeah. price. So I lowered the thing so if you want to get everything for a, a week early if you want to get this podcast if you want to listen to actually i'll discuss it in a second i have no idea what our next episode is going to be so we'll discuss it on air real quick uh if you want to get that right now and you're listening to this on youtube three dollars on the patreon gets you that gets you all the patreon exclusive stuff and gets you at the one dollar level if you just got one dollar there's wow cool Ropod, me and my friend wayne aka bolt creature uh, go through and review every single robot in existence. It's five to ten minute episodes. It's a lot of fun. We just pick ten robots and record it all in like one batch, like in an hour and a half or whatever. And then I edit them throughout like the next couple months. Uh, but yeah, so again, thank you, Velvet, for thank you joining. So much. And while while we have a guest here, you're gonna have to listen to some quick debate because oh, my you. original plan mm-hmm. was. To, as the next episode was to do the Iron Giant because it would have lined up with uh, Thanksgiving, which is they always aired like a, a day long marathon of the Iron Giant on Thanksgiving. However, we we ended up taking a break from recording last week as of recording this due to the election. Not going to get too much into that, but you know we ended up taking a week off, so we're set back a bit. So, do we want to go straight into? Uh, like our plans for the episodes into December were to do an episode on Toonami, 
just in general. Uh, an episode on Adult Swim in general. And then the talk about some movies that are related to Cartoon Network and uh, the holidays, basically. So the two that I picked were Grandma Got Ran Over by a Reindeer and Eight Crazy Nights. Because oh, Hanukkah's my God. After alone, you are doing Hanukkah's Eight Crazy Nights. <laughs> yeah. It's Hanukkah's after Christmas <laughs> this year. So it would be the last episode of the month. And uh-huh. I would finally get to, you know... I'm going to rip my uh, eyes out. I'm not going <laughs> to... I am, I am so glad. I'm so looking forward to that episode. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not I'm not looking forward to it. So... I'm going to fucking... There, Wyatt, you know I hate poop jokes. You know I hate poop jokes mm. more than anything. You're going to make me watch... Eight cra- okay, so here's my opinion, Wyatt. And I'm not letting my hate get in the way of this. Yeah. I think we can talk about Iron Giant at any point because Iron Giant is really important. I think yeah, we should yeah. definitely still do the episode. However, I think doing episodes on Toonami and Adult Swim are very important. Because I think we yeah. can do those now and then do them again later. Because Toonami and Adult Swim now versus what it was when we get to like yeah. later on that time are very different. So I think it'd be yeah. nice to have on Wax a mm. early version of like what Toonami and Adult Swim were. Yeah, and if we truly go insane and are like, let's just do every Adult Swim show or a Toonami show. Because like right now I don't have them on the schedule like i have select shows that aired like megas technically aired on yeah, tsunami yeah. but it's still a cartoon network studio show uh but there's plenty of shows that were on tsunami and thing in like maguzi and stuff like that that never <laughs> are we gonna do an episode on like fuck off totally totally spies or <laughs> Code Leoko there's a whole or... podcast for that no anyway we're yeah. gonna <laughs> we're gonna say velvet uh, i do want to throwing a spanner there. into the works here um Iron Giant episode should be a 24 hour live stream. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> or just, just somehow just get a rotating create a 24 hour long episode to put up. <laughs> mm. Oh god! Yeah. I, on our, uh, fucking we stream like talk about yeah. Let's just cry on fucking stream. Let's stream. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I do. Th- I do think we should put Iron Giant off though to do it as like something special because yeah. it is a like serious move that like means a lot to me. And uh, yeah. I don't want to sound like a fucking huge ass nerd. Maybe form a little bit of my politics, probably. Um, watching mm. that movie so much as a kid. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah I, th- uh, I do think we should do Toonami and Adult Swim next. Those are the two things. Yes. Yeah. Iron Giant, I definitely want to do that. And we did talk about the idea of, like, oh, if we get to a certain Patreon stretch goal, uh, we could start doing just movies, like cartoon movies. And it can be, like, anything and not even... The four billion time Cartoon movies, Network, yeah. but But... A, but a few that like have that I remember like airing a bunch on Cartoon Network are like Iron Giant and Balto and Cats Don't Dance. Mm-hmm. You know, like those are kind of like ones that are in my head. Um, what a handsome yeah. but, fucking... You know, Balto. I feel like people sleep on Balto. <laughs> like, I feel I mean, like people don't. You they they you, look at it. They're like, Balto oh, it's a one crappy, of those things like, where it's like talking wolf movie. <laughs> I feel like people rightfully sleep on it but not because it's yeah. bad but it's just like i can't sell mm-hmm. this as a hidden gem also <laughs> i just also, like wait, it a I'm, lot you need to know more gay yeah. man furries then dude because they're not sleeping that's on true Balto, <laughs> they, they wish they were sleeping on balto if you know what i mean like but but yeah oh, i think i think that's a good call yeah we should just do tsunami adult swim and then we'll oh we'll fucking end the right. month with fucking eight cr- i'm gonna kill you well, i'm gonna we're, kill we're you doing with gra- grandma got ran over by a reindeer first. that movie sucks too <laughs> I'm yeah that, that one's way worse <laughs> so <laughs> i'm what oh man guys you're but that's it. another this one is... that i just remember them airing all the fucking yeah, time and it's bad and guys this is it by the way um those will be the last cartoon with food episodes i'm gonna kill wyatt so yeah um... yeah we'll be good uh, and then after that we will do because we wanted to do teen titans with our friend, uh, our friend Broden, uh, who was on the Time Squad episode, and uh, like he's just been busy. Like he re- he recently spent one hundred million thousand dollars in uh, Louisiana. Like he went to <laughs> New Orleans <laughs> and for a couple of weeks to visit visit his partner. And then you know, uh, like you know that video. The like this is my weekend as a twenty eight year old living in Chicago. <laughs> and it's just a guy goes to like a billion places. One- yeah. Yeah, one hundred plays. <laughs> that was uh, that was him. So we're giving him a little bit of uh, you know. So wait, so okay, before off. we end the episode, what are we yeah. actually doing after Eight Crazy Nights and Grandma got run over by a rain- reindeer? 
after that, you know, that will be in January. Mm-hmm. Like, there, that will be when the episodes are airing. So we'll probably, like... Something good, please. I, well, Teen Titans would be... <laughs> what oh, my that? God. But, I'm going to but fucking if you want to, kill you. I'm going if to... you want to rearrange it, we can just do... No, no. I think the despair is good. So that when my birthday is yeah. around, we're doing something that won't make me fucking hate myself. We've had it yeah. too... I've had it too good for too long. I've had it too well, good for too long. <laughs> That's it. Here's my Morgan. Yeah, y- you enjoy being a hater. Uh, being a hater gives mm. you life. I feel like yeah. Teen Titans <laughs> yeah. will be a good recovery because Eight Crazy yeah, Nights yeah. will just be deservedly miserable. It, with Teen <laughs> Titans, you get to rain on people's parade. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. fucking have the most controversial opinion on the internet, dude. Fucking hell. Mm. G- great. That's the plan, then, guys. So uh, look out but, for. Well, Tunami. so I, I say, like, yeah, we're gonna be doing those episodes. Those episodes don't require us to do any watching or anything like the tsunami and adult swim one so me while we're doing that you should be watching teen titans that's your homework don't tell me Uh, what to do (laughs) (laughs) because it's like five fucking seasons so yeah fuck you you. i hate you let's end this episode you piece of shit all right yeah you're no longer my friend you're my enemy yeah Yeah, so next up we got where we will be talking about tsunami just broadly talking about that. I, I think eventually we'll do separate episodes talking about like Dragon Ball and Naruto. Yeah, like and an stuff, anime episode. But yeah. like, because like, uh, trust me, I have read Dragon Ball so many fucking times. I do not need to rewatch it or anything to like know exactly what me with to Naruto. talk about. Me with Naruto. Yeah. So yeah. Yes. But yeah, thank uh, you, thank you guys for listening <laughs> yeah. to this episode. Um, the uh, prison experiment that my friend Y is doing on me is going really well. <laughs> it begins next week. So uh, <laughs> thank you for being on here. Thank you again, Velvet, one more time because you were a yes. great guest and it's great to talk to you. Uh, uh, mm-hmm. Thank you. I'm I'm just I'm just happy to be here and stir the pot mm-hmm. a little. <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. All right. Take care, everybody. Peace out. Bye. <laughs>